stroke syndromes are collections of signs and symptoms resulting from strokes in different regions of the brain or central nervous system. In this video, we will cover the stroke syndromes associated with strokes in the territory of the middle cerebral artery. It supplies most of the temporal lobe, the anterolateral frontal lobe, and the parietal lobe. The middle cerebral artery comes off the internal carotid artery and is divided into segments. The segments are the M1, or the horizontal segment, which is the most proximal part and gives off lenticulostriate arteries, which are deeper, penetrating arteries that supply the basal ganglia and surrounding region. The M2 segment, known as the sylvian segment, is next, which typically includes a bifurcation into the superior and inferior segments. M3 segments are cortical segments, supplying the cortex. Our first syndrome results from a stroke affecting the middle cerebral artery superior division, which normally supplies the lateral frontal lobe and the superior parietal lobes. In this syndrome, findings include contralateral weakness of the upper limbs and the lower limbs, and a weakness of the contralateral lower face, with a greater effect seen on the face and the upper limb rather than the lower limb. This is because of the motor homunculus, where we see that the areas of the cortex responsible for the legs are supplied more so by the anterior cerebral artery, and so are less affected in middle cerebral artery strokes. Also remember that it is the lower part of the face that is affected, because this only receives unilateral innervation from the facial nerve while the upper two-thirds receives bilateral innervation. There is also often a hemisensory loss on the contralateral side that may affect the face, arm, or legs. If the stroke involves the dominant hemisphere, which is usually the left side, then an expressive aphasia may be seen, as Broca's area is found on the dominant side and is responsible for the production of speech. If the stroke is on the non-dominant side, then we see a contralateral hemi-neglect, where the patient may be unaware or unresponsive to stimuli on one side, which may include not being able to recognize their own limbs. Next, we have the middle cerebral artery inferior division syndrome. The inferior division supplies the lateral temporal lobe, and the deficits seen here are typically a contralateral homonymous hemianopia due to the involvement of the optic radiations. It is also possible to see an upper quadrantinopia. Similarly to the superior division, we can see different deficits if the dominant hemisphere is involved. In this instance, Wernicke's area is on the dominant side, and this is responsible for comprehension of speech. Therefore, a receptive aphasia may be seen. If the non-dominant hemisphere is affected, then constructional apraxia may be seen, which is a difficulty with motor planning resulting in the inability to execute tasks despite having understood the instructions and having the physical capability to perform them. Gerstmann syndrome is next, which is seen when the parietal lobe of the dominant side is affected, specifically around the angular gyrus. The features include a tetrad of symptoms, including acalculia and agraphia, which are the inability to calculate and the inability to write. The remaining two features are finger agnosia, which is the impairment in discriminating, recognizing, or naming their own fingers or the fingers of others. And the fourth is a difficulty in discriminating left from right, known as left to right disorientation. Another potential finding in Gerstmann's is alexia, which is the inability to read. Note that although Gerstmann syndrome can result from stroke, there are other etiologies as well, including aneurysms and even developmental Gerstmann syndrome. Ataxic hemiparesis is next, which is seen when there is damage to the posterior limb of the internal capsule, or the basis pontis of the pons. The lenticulostriate arteries of the middle cerebral artery are the involved vessels in this syndrome, but it may also be caused by involvement of the small penetrating arteries of the basilar artery as well. The presentation includes contralateral upper and lower limb weakness, which is typically more prominent in the leg than in the arm. The ataxic portion of the name comes from the upper and lower limb ataxia. Note that in ataxic hemiparesis, 
There is no facial involvement or speech disturbance.